So uh, up above, um, we talked a little bit about what a good success metric might be. Uh, and we mentioned that accuracy is, is not always the right metric. And uh, I presented a couple of alternatives, um, namely precision and recall. So this is gonna be a very uh, short video to help orient you around some of the other success metrics you might wanna use. Um, and uh, at a very high level, we're not gonna get into some more complicated stuff, which we will get into later, or we actually might graph out some of this. We're just gonna look at numerical um, evaluations of how good um, either a prediction or a classification model is. Um, specifically, we're gonna be looking at bi binary uh, predictions or classifications, which is to say either this thing is this, or it's that. And so there, the, the first thing that comes to mind is accuracy, um, which is you know, what percentage of the answers were right, okay? And so uh, we're gonna explore that a little more. To do that, um, let's think of an example. So uh, a while back, actually, I created an algorithm uh, to try to predict whether or not the university would close uh, due to inclement weather. And uh, so I sort of put that model together um, I did some training. We all sort of learned more about what that is over the course of the, the next several lessons. Um, but basically, I, I fed it some historic data and tried to see if we could get um, a pattern of what made something close. And I based it upon things like the, the precipitation, the temperature, um, things like that. And it turned out I had a model that uh, was 98% accurate. And great. I mean, that's, that sounds great. If I told you I had a model to predict snow days that was 98% accurate then you'd be like, great, great, okay, well, that sounds great, let's use that. Um, now the thing is, um, let's stop and think about this for a minute. Um, what if it's only 2% of the days that we have class actually get canceled uh, due to inclement weather? If that's the case, then I could have had a, uh, an algorithm that was 98% accurate if all I had done was say, school will not be canceled. So that could be my model. My model for just every day to say, school will not be canceled. And I would have been 98% accurate. So this is similar to the SCOTUS example um, I referenced in the video above. Um, so in order to know how, uh, whether or not accuracy means anything, we have to see, well, what is that, uh, that ratio? What is that rate of um, normal cancellations to, uh, to overall? And when we looked at that, we found that the percentage of non-snow days among overall school days was actually 98%. So my model was not doing any better than just guessing always, uh, always, we're always open. Okay. So uh, that being said, it would be really nice if we had uh, some other tools in our toolbox to interrogate that model and, uh, or the results from that model and see, well, is it, is it just always guessing? Uh, we aren't closed, is it catching anything? Is it doing anything useful? Um, and so uh, this is where we introduce the idea of something called a confusion matrix. And a confusion matrix is just a way of representing uh, the, the number of true positives, false positives, false negatives, and true negatives um, that a prediction makes or that a model makes, um, whether it be a prediction or a classification. Um, and uh, it, we represent it, uh, as you can see here in this graph. And so we have the, the positives along the top um, and we have the negatives along the bottom. And then we classify them as either being true positives, that means that our prediction or classification was correct, these things actually turned out to be positives, um, or false positive, which means our, our algorithm was incorrect, it said that there was something there when it wasn't, or false negatives, um, uh, when we said there wasn't anything there but there was, or true negatives, when we said there wasn't anything there and there wasn't. Um, this, this confusion matrix can be really uh, useful because it helps us divide out these different types of true or false positives and uh, allows us then to do calculations on top of them. And so we can get some other numeric metrics to evaluate how well our, um, our models do. And I'm just gonna use the term model here um, because models sort of generally would work whether or not we are doing a prediction model or a classification. Um, so what we wanna do is we wanna go back to those, uh, those terms we, we mentioned above, precision and recall. And what they are is they're just a ratio of um, these things we find in the confusion matrix. Uh, so what we've got for precision is we've got um, the true positives over the true positives and the false positives. So uh, you can think about this as if I say that something's positive, how often am I right about that? And that's the precision of our model. Uh, and then you also have recall. 
which is concerned about the true positives over the true positives and the false negatives. Um, and so this is more of a statement about if something's present, um, how likely am I to be able to find it? And so we're sort of making a comment uh, with precision recall about when some model makes a prediction, how confident am I that that prediction actually is right? And how confident am I that I found the thing that I was looking for? And so we can go ahead and we can make uh, numerical calculations to find those uh, metrics using the numbers we have in the confusion matrix. And if we did that uh, here, we'd find that we'd have a recall of 0.5 and a precision of 0.2, okay? Now, one of the things to note about things like uh, accuracy, precision, recall, they all vary uh, numerically between zero and one, or between 0% and 100%, um, depending upon how you wanna look at it. And so we know that one would be perfect. So if we had a perfect precision, uh, we have a value of one. If we had a perfect recall, we have a value of one. So um, this means that we can start to, to look at them and we can see, oh, well, these things, you know, that, that precision is pretty crappy. You know, it's, it's not even 50% of the things that I'm saying are uh, positives, are, are in fact positives. In this case, that would be, um, in, our, in our example, that would be like uh, less than, you know, so 20% of the time when I say school is going to be canceled, um, it's, it's not, uh, or well, 20% of the time when I say it's going to be canceled, it is canceled, which is pretty poor performance. Um, and we're only catching uh, a very, we're not catching uh, a very high proportion of the true, um, the true positives or the true cancellation dates there. And how recall tells us that. So you have this question then, is so you have different models and you want to compare them. Well, we know it would be nice if all these things were one. If we had 100% accuracy, 100% precision, 100% recall, um, those would all be great. But how do you compare things where you might have something that says the precision say is really good, but the recall is really bad, or vice versa? And if I have two models, one that has better precision, so if I have two models and say this one's precision is better than this one's precision, but this one's recall is better than this one's recall, how do I make a determination as to which of those models is better? And so um, what you actually need is some way of combining your insights about precision and recall. And that's where we enter in uh, another metric, which is the F1 score. And the F1 score is uh, it's actually a, a type of average. Uh, it's an average, um, uh, a well weighted average of precision and recall. So you just take uh, the precision times the recall, divide it by the precision plus the recall, and then multiply that by two, and you get a, a value called the F1 score. And what this does is it's a weighted average of the precision recall, such that if you have, uh, some, back to our example of something that has a good precision, better precision than this guy, um, or and this one has a better recall than this guy, it allows you to be able to somehow make some uh, comparison between the two models to say, oh, well, this one's uh, in some sense better than this one because uh, taken together, the precision and recall end up being better. Um, and so that's our F1 score. Um, everything I've said here is uh, perhaps even better described in, uh, or engaged with in a, a text manner, but uh, we've gotten used to these video exchanges and I think hopefully uh, they are engaging and give you a little something to think about. Um, that being said, down below I've provided a, a link that will go over uh, much of this material again. Um, it's not important that you memorize this uh, such that you can calculate these things right off the top of your head, but to know that there are these different types of success metrics and that they care about different things um, and that we can combine them together in ways uh, that are gonna be useful. And in fact, we're gonna be using the F1 score uh, metric uh, in your challenges below. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you have some understanding of what's going on there. Um, and uh, there, of course, is our, our F1 score.